Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at an Android Trojan called Fire Scam that has been found in the wild, masquerading itself as a premium version of the Telegram messaging app in order to trick people into installing it. The hackers behind the malware also managed to create a pretty convincing copy of the RU store in order to distribute the malware. Now, in case you haven't heard of the RU store, it's an Android app store that was launched by VK in Russia back in 2022 after many tech companies left the country because of sanctions that were brought against them. So in Russia, the smartphone ecosystem is becoming more similar to how it is in China, where de-googled Android phones are the norm and stateside alternatives to those Google services fill in the gaps where available although the Russian solution is lacking some important features that the Chinese one is doing better, which we'll talk about in the end when we're discussing mitigations for this threat. This is a screenshot of the now defunct rustoreapk.github.io website that the malware was being distributed through. And you can see that it looks exactly the same as the real Telegram listing in the real RU store. Now, this fake app is not really the fire scam malware itself, but rather it's a dropper with the file name getappsru.apk that installs the fire scam malware after the fact. Fire scam is primarily an information stealer that scans devices for valuable credentials like private keys and passwords and things like that, which it first sends to a Firebase database endpoint where it is temporarily stored and the valuable content like credit card numbers and passwords then gets filtered out to be sold on the black market. This malware, like many others that we've done analysis on, uses multiple obfuscation techniques in order to avoid being identified by anti-malware tools. And being that this is malware designed to target Android devices specifically, its authors decided to use DexGuard as part of this obfuscation process. DexGuard is an application security framework for Android apps that uses a number of techniques that makes it harder to analyze the applications for the purposes of making them harder to tamper with. It might be used by mobile game developers, for example, to make it more difficult for people to cheat in the game, or make it more difficult for black hats that might use analysis tools on a normal application in order to find a vulnerability in it to hack somebody's device. But since these same app analysis tools are used by anti-malware programs, app security tools like DexGuard can also benefit the bad guys as well. Another unique feature of Android malware that's used by Firescam is the very broad permission request that it makes when you first install it. Some of these permissions include query all packages, which allows it to see all of the installed apps that are on the device. And this is probably to avoid particular anti-malware solutions and used for general recon. Read and write permissions to external storage are also requested. The request delete packages and request install packages permissions are also requested, which of course lets Firescam delete and install other applications on the device, which of course can be used to load other malicious apps onto it. And it may also potentially be used to delete security applications that are installed on the device Additionally, the update packages without user action permission is requested, which as the name implies, lets Firescam update packages without any user interaction. But worst of all, the enforce update ownership permission is requested, which restricts app updates to the app's designated owner. So when you install an app from an app store or some kind of third-party installer, that app store or the installer can declare itself the update owner, meaning that it's the only one that can automatically update the app without user approval. This allows the malware to maintain its persistence on the device, and when you combine this with its permission to install new apps, it can make those new malicious apps persistent as well. 
After FireScam is installed and has its permissions granted, it goes through a number of checks to make sure that it's not just running in a sandbox environment, like checking to see what other applications are installed, identifying its own process name at runtime, and fingerprinting the device details, since that's usually a dead giveaway that you're in a virtualized environment. These checks could also serve the purpose of identifying other security devices that might need to be bypassed. For example, the Knox security system is something that's unique just to Samsung phones and Samsung devices in general. So if you're running one of those devices, then FireScam might have to run a different way in order to avoid detection. Afterwards, the app registers a service to receive Firebase cloud messaging notifications, which can be used for two-way communications with a command and control server and the FireScam malware that's on the device, effectively turning it into a reverse shell. The malware also monitors the activity of the Messages app on a compromised device and extracts the contents of text messages and sends them back to the database. So if you end up with FireScam installed on your phone, it's not just the NSA that's monitoring all your text messages anymore, or I guess the FSB, since the malware is being distributed through a fake RU store, and that tells me that the hackers are probably trying to target Russians specifically, because I don't think there's a lot of people outside of Russia using the RU store. But needless to say, if your device gets infected by this information stealer, any privacy that you might have thought you had on your smartphone is definitely out the door now. The malware also monitors screen state changes to know when your screen is off or on, when it's being interacted with, they can specifically see how many touches and what kinds of touches are going on with the screen, and they can see for what duration it remains in these different states. So this effectively tells the hackers when the device is in use, and they could use this information to conduct attacks that require user interaction. The social engineering possibilities with something like that are just endless. It also monitors notifications that are coming from other apps, which gives the hackers even more insight into the user's interactions on the device. And what spyware wouldn't be complete without a good old keylogger, clipboard, and autofill monitor? This malware is basically able to monitor all activity on your device once it's been compromised. Now, of course, if people just downloaded what they thought is Telegram Premium and it just starts stealing their data, people would probably get wise to the shenanigans pretty quickly. So while the malware is doing its information stealing in the background, it presents the user with a web view displaying a legitimate login page to web.telegram.org. Now, of course, your account won't actually be upgraded to premium by installing this app and logging in here. In fact, if you were to log into Telegram while this app is running, then you're not gonna have a Telegram account for much longer since the hackers would get your password right as you typed it or paste it in from your password manager. Now, in order to keep safe from malware like this, my best advice is really to not install stupid apps from stupid places. Like, I guess I could understand someone wanting to use Telegram, even though they're giving away a lot of people's information now after their CEO was held up in France. Uh, and I could even understand wanting to use Telegram Premium. I mean, maybe you're getting a little something extra out of that, but don't try to pirate that shit from some shady website. Official and even third-party application repos are usually much more reliable than just getting a random APK from some website online. I don't know if a standalone app exists for the RU store or if people in Russia actually do have to visit the website to download their APKs to use them, but that would be a good first step to cut down on people registering similar domains to the RU store for malicious purposes. Just have the app store pre-installed on the phones like the phones that people buy in China. Maybe the Russians can make some kind of deal with the Chinese to get the RU store pre-installed on their phones like the Chinese app stores are on their phones. Or at the very least, 
when the babushkas are in the Russian cell phone stores getting their new smartphone, have one of the nice lads there create a home screen shortcut to the RU store so that Babushka's world famous dumpling recipe doesn't get stolen by dark web hacker mans. If you enjoyed this video, please like and share it to hack the algorithm and check out my website based.win where you can buy my stylish merch and accessories for your phone or laptop. 10% store wide discount when you pay in Monero XMR at checkout. Have a great rest of your day.